Let's talk Giants football. Heading into the Dolphins game, uh, things were not looking good, and uh, they were only things were only made worse by Evan Neal and his comments about the Giants fan base. I'm not going to repeat it here, but apparently during the Seahawks game, late in the game, the fans were booing. He uh, turned to the crowd and said, "Boo louder! Can't hear you. Boo louder!" Um, and then uh, I guess in his comments. Uh, Monday, Tuesday, maybe Monday night. He said that uh, Giants fans are fair weather bandwagon fans. Uh, uh, he's a lion. While we're a lion, doesn't consider himself a sheep. He calls considers himself a lion. Interesting. Lots of great memes coming out of that. <laughs> and then um, all because we boo, you know, saying that we're hamburger flippers and hot dog flippers. And so Don Lagreca went on an epic rank, rank rant on uh and i i feel the need to play epic rant on wfan in response to evan neal's comments i'm going to try and pull, pull it up here right tackle evan neal looked up towards the stands raised his arms and gestured sarcastically he said he did not flip off fans but he did yell a clear message to them they are booing us so i said boo louder neal told nj advanced media on wednesday why would a lion concern himself with the opinion of a sheep he added the person that's commenting on my performance, what does he do? Flip hot dogs and hamburgers somewhere? Are you kidding me? I cut his ass. I would. How dare you? These people pay your salary. They pay an obnoxious amount of money to park, an obnoxious amount of money for PSLs to sit there and watch this pack, and you call them hamburger flippers? What, you're so much better? I'd rather have a guy that's flipping hamburgers blocked than your piece of garbage ass. Who the hell are you to talk to fans like that? You piece of garbage. I hate when players do that. You're not above us. What, because you happen to play a sport? You're better than me. You're better than the people that pay your salary. These giant fans were here before you, and they'll be here after your sorry ass is cut. What a piece of human trash. And I don't want to hear some apology. I don't want to hear, oh, I was taken out of contact. I didn't mean, I don't want to hear, done, done. I would cut his fat ass. <laughs> You see him in the Mall of Willowbrook, boo his ass. If you see him in the DMV, boo him. Don't stop booing him. If he goes to the Pro Bowl, boo him. If he wins a Super Bowl, boo his sorry ass. Screw that guy. We're not nobody. Flipping, but how are you taught you condescend to people that pay to watch you play poorly, I might add. Whew. All time. One of the best ever. Uh... And, you know, I, you know, emotionally, I agree with a lot of what he said. There was a couple, I mean, towards the end, it got a little absurd. Like, if he goes to the Pro Bowl, boo his ass. If he goes to the Super Bowl, boo his ass. But, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, it, the wheels are coming off. It's And that's what happens when you lose and you lose as badly as we have. But, God damn, I know as a young dude, I've done plenty of dumber stuff. And I'm twice as old. So, you know, uh, but you just got to be a little more self-aware, read the room a little bit better. I, I decided to take a look because, you know, I, 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 I mean, just last night I had a friend text me like, like take it easy. You're not on the team. You got to put it in perspective. And I'm like, I, but that's not, I'm a fan. Like I am a fanatic. That's what fan is short for fanatic. We're zealots. We're, we're, we live and die and, you know, blood, sweat, and tears on this friggin' team, even though it it does not matter at all. <laughs> and goddamn, how I wish I could quit you, New York Giants. But I haven't. The reason I haven't gone to a ton of games anymore is because, like, I just straight up can't afford a lot of the games. Like, even the cheap seats are still a hundo, and that doesn't include parking concessions uh and if you go with, like that's just solo like if, if, if i want to take my daughter it's like 200 uh plus all the other stuff that comes with it so i took a look at ticket prices i i tweeted this out imagine paying this absurd amount of money while earning what is the median or the average for new jersey or new york which i assume is in the 60k to 85k annual salary range to watch your favorite team get steamrolled every week then have your top 10 draft pick mock you you know a, a coach's club PSL is $20,000. Season tickets, $7,000. Lower level PSL, $20,000. $2,000 for season tickets. Mezzanine level, $4,000 for a PSL. $1,300 for the season tickets. Terrace level, you know, minimum $950 for season tickets. That, I mean, you know, 
it can be it can be a lot, especially when you're over budget like I am. And to to call out the fans that actually do show up to shit on or talk shit about the people that actually paid to show up to watch you uh perform as poorly as you did. Ugh. So he 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 apologized via a notes app, which is always uh, so heartfelt and sincere. So I, I tweeted, well, I first tweeted, fans boo because we care. We're emotionally invested and we were told that you specifically and the team would improve and take a big step forward, big leap, leap forward every day for seven months straight. So it's from February through August. It was Evan Neal has progressed. Evan Neal looks better. Evan, Evan Neal is going to take a leap in step year two. He's going to be just like Andrew Thomas. Andrew Thomas struggled his rookie year, in year two, all, you know, blah, blah, blah. So that's all we were fed, spoon fed for seven months straight. And not only you, but the team had improved. And uh, I just showed you the stupid amount of money that, People have to pay just to see you play in person. That doesn't count how much people are paying for jerseys, m- clothing, merch, uh, all kinds of bullshit that's related to the Giants. I mean, even the simple fact that I like legitimately pay for a Hulu Live subscription because of the Giants and Mets. Like, if they didn't exist, I don't know if I'd have a Hulu Live subscription, which is a cool ninety dollars a month. So it's like. Not a lot of money, but we're spending money and we keep tuning in and we keep watching, we keep showing up and we boo. In my mind, if I'm a player, and I don't know if players understand this, what would you rather have? A a stadium that's kind of full, half full, that has people in it that are booing versus just an empty stadium. And my God, over the past decade, we have seen a lot of games where just fucking no one shows up. And if we're playing a team that does not have a very popular fan base, they don't show up. And it has, that's when it's the worst. I mean, there were tons of games where, um, where uh, you know, in 2017, maybe 2018, where you had like the opposing team has a strong presence in the area and they would show up and show out and they'd be making more noise than the Giants fan base. But, you know. It's it's hard to justify spending a lot of money to when you know your team is gonna get trounced every week. So it's better that you're they're still showing up and they're still booing versus I mean it's better than them showing up and not making a single sound. You don't find that a little eerie? And it's for sure better than just a straight up empty stadium. So what's wild is Justin Pugh, we we signed Justin Pugh and like on day three, he's talking to the media and he has been with the, I mean, like I said, day three, three days with the friggin' team. And he has probably the quote of the year in terms of like quote that you would expect from a fucking leader on this team. We need the fans. We need the support. That's something I urge the fans to do is just keep supporting us. We're going to continue to work hard. That felt more authentic and genuine. And maybe it's because he's just new to the team and doesn't know how bad it really is. <laughs> like once he gets down to the deep shit of the factory and he sees how the sausage is made, he's going to pull a 180 on that kind of approach. But it, it felt like he meant it. Whereas a lot of the, a lot of the, inter- and I don't watch a ton of the interviews because I feel like they're all go the same way. I mean, I, I honestly think Brian Dable's head is going to explode like scanners in one of these press conferences because he literally says the, almost the same answer to every question. And the New York media is relentless and they pepper him with the same type of questions week in and week out. And he just says, and he just keeps, and they want him to slip up and they want him to make a mistake because it makes headlines and it gets to be great content that people click on. And so they want that and they're baiting him and they're baiting him and he's not taking the bait, but you can see he's like boiling inside. Like you can tell he's just so fucking pissed. And he just keeps giving the same answer. Yeah, just gotta work harder. Yeah, just gotta gotta work hard. Yeah, we just gotta improve and we gotta work harder. Yeah, that's something we gotta work on. Like you know, I I suggest not watching that if you're a Giants fan. Uh, and I suggest suggest not watching a lot of the interviews that you're getting because you're you're starting to see and hear a lot of the players. Uh, their frustration is coming through, and and they're taking it out on the fans, on the media, and 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 uh, you know, it's just it's. Feels like 2017 all over again. Ew. Evan Neal and Eric Flowers were both Giants top 10 draft picks. Here's a comparison with uh, pro football focus grades that suggested Eric Flowers widely considered one of the biggest busts in Giants draft history. 
is per- outperforming Evan Neal at this uh, early point in their careers. Oh, no. Year one of Eric Flowers, he had a 54.9 overall grade, 58.9 run blocking grade, 50, 50.5 pass blocking, five sacks allowed, 17 hits allowed, 50 hurries allowed. Year one, Evan Neal was a 41.8 overall grade, 48.1 run blocking grade, 42.3 pass blocking grade, eight sacks allowed, 10 hits allowed, 34 hurries allowed. So not as many hits and hurries, but three more sacks. In year two, now this is before the Dolphins game, before the Dolphins game, Flowers had a 69.4 overall grade, 73.5 run blocking, 69.4 uh, pass blocking, I believe that is. Five sacks allowed, nine hits, 47 hurries. Year two of Evan Neal, this is extrapolated over the full season, we will have a 40.9 overall grade, 58.4 run blocking, 36.5 pass blocking, six sacks allowed, 17 hits, and 51 hurries. Yeah. You know, uh, it's, it's I, at what point do you just say, all right, I think we give this a fair shake. I forget when we moved on from Eric Flowers because Flowers was what? 20, what year was he the pick? My God, I already forgot. Was he 2015 or 2014 or 2016? God damn, I, I completely blanked on that. Uh, da, 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 da. 2015. By 2018, I believe, unless I'm mistaken, that he was still at the tackle position. He might have moved. I think that 2018 was when we signed friggin' Nate Solder. Oh my God. To a monster contract. So he played left tackle and then uh, Eric Flowers moved to right tackle. <laughs> and that didn't work out any better. So then we let him walk and then he ends up with the Washington uh, Commanders and moves to guard. And he's like, I mean, he's no longer in the league. He wasn't in the league last year, but uh, I guess he did fairly well on. Uh, on Washington's team as a guard. So it's not looking great for Evan Neal. And all you have to do is your job, A. Like, it, you don't even have to win at this point. <laughs> just like, just do your job. Be better than you have, which is not asking a lot. 